House in the Oval Office of the Gulf Coast. Welcome back to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallup. Sit down, buckle up, and hang on. All right, folks, welcome back. Well, Mike Schusman in the house with me. Welcome back, Mike. Folks, it's good to have you with us on this Friday afternoon and again to our Sunday night audience here on the Gulf Coast, 1620 AM and 92.3 FM. Blowtorch stations that broadcast all over the Gulf Coast, up in here, down in here, wherever you are. <laughs> and we appreciate you as well. All right, Mike Shoesmith. So you teased us with the leaking oil story. For those that are yeah. listening that might not have a clue what we're talking about, uh, give us the backstory first and then bring us right up to date because this is fascinating because PNN News and Ministry Network, which you are the editor of, they really were on the cutting edge of exposing the possibilities of this a long time ago and now it has proven once yeah. again pnn was correct so give the backstory and bring us up to date now hush go ahead i'll let uh, the times free press uh, dot com here I'll let them give the, they did a great job uh, talking about all this here their their article title is ministry with bible allegedly producing oil shuts down but continues to defend its work we've been talking about this for a long time in fact yeah. i like zeb Porat's line on it he says that the word of god doesn't leak it just doesn't leak yeah and so we 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 saw this at, we saw we called hoax on this uh, months and months ago uh, but the uh, the times free press dot com is, is, is writing here uh, in the days since the times free press published its investigation into his name is flowing oil ministry his name is flowing oil ministry in Dalton, Georgia. The team behind the Bible, allegedly producing oil, continues to defend its ministry, despite the fact, Carl, <laughs> that uh, despite admitting that its leader bought the mineral oil and canceled, and canceled all future prayer services, at the same time the church that allowed the ministry to, to use its space is distancing itself from the ministry, okay? So, uh, you know, like the, the rats are jumping off the ship here. Uh, last week, the ministry held the final gathering of its weekly event that would attract hundreds of people to Dalton's Wink Theater. The ministry team members, including Jerry Pierce and Johnny Taylor, estimated they handed out 3,500 free vials of oil. People reported being cured of long-term ailments and having profound religious experiences using... Uh, the uh, placebos. The Times Free Press wrote about the group. A uh, placebo is my word, not theirs. The Times Free Press wrote about the group in November of 2019, but began investigating the ministry in the months following, finding that Pierce bought the mineral oil, large amounts of it, from the local tractor supply company <laughs> store there no. in Dalton, oh, Georgia. No. Uh, in a November interview, Pierce said the Bible does not produce oil when the group is traveling with it. The oil only flows when the book is, is in Dalton, he said. So I guess they have to top it off as they're driving along the road there. Uh, series of, but, but here's the clincher here. A series of chemical analyses by the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga of Pierce's oil compared it to the, the ideal brand mineral oil at Tractor Supply found Pierce's oil is petroleum-derived and is exact match to the product sold at Tractor Supply. So, I mean, the, 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 the cat is out of the bag. The proverbial cat is out of the bag. Here's the problem here. Uh, this, was, this was a hoax. Uh, when the Times Free Press began questioning the ministry in January, the ministry said it would not defend its work, something it also said in a November interview. So, I mean, how much money did they get from this? They pulled the plug on it now. Are they just counting their dollars and they're just making out for the hills? I don't know. Uh, but here's, here's the juxtaposition. Here's the contrast here, okay? Uh, this is going to be a bad story, good story sort of segment here because a church in Cincinnati has just wiped out $46.5 million in medical debt for 45,000 families, right? Yeah. So here we have the, 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 the contrast here. Uh, the church doing the actual will of God in the world. The mega church in Cincinnati announced Sunday that it is paying off $46.5 million in medical debt for more than 45,000 families. Crossroads Church partnered with RIP Medical Debt, a medical debt relief nonprofit, to wipe out debts for people in Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. They will receive bright yellow envelopes this week, letting them know the good news, uh, I would add, the good news of what, G of what this church did in Jesus' name. 
I'm wow. hoping that that wow. will all come out. That this was all done at the leading and guidance as an assignment from Almighty God. These people raking in tens of millions of dollars in these mega churches. Yeah. Here's this mega church putting its money where its mouth is. Uh, the tome against the church's pastor told his congregation about the opportunity to multiply our impact during the November 23rd sermon. They'll get a letter that says, "Congratulations, your debt has been paid because someone loves you, and there is a God that has not forgotten about you." Wow. Well, praise God for that. Wow. The pastor read aloud a message from one of the from one of the beneficiaries. See, the the article here at Fox News calls them lucky beneficiaries. Yeah. Now, I yeah. believe in luck, <laughs> by the way. I do believe in luck. So here's my take on luck. If you pray for something that is in the public sphere and you get an answer to that prayer, you are blessed. But everybody around you uh, that benefits from that uh, blessing just had just as lucky to be there in your presence <laughs> at that time, That's at right. that moment. Those people were just just happened to be there. Uh, luck, as Dr. Fraser Crane told his brother Niles, is the residue of divine intervention. That's what luck is. That's okay, right. so that's, that's where I believe in luck. But these people are are blessed by Almighty God to be in the crosshairs of of this church and their 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 assignment from Almighty God to take care of this desperate need that people have to stay out of bankruptcy courts. What are your thoughts? on that as a pastor of, of a large church in your area. Yeah, I, I think that is absolutely amazing. And, and, and I so wish that I was the pastor of a church that had that kind of resources to do. But yet we do take many, many, many tens of thousands of dollars from our church. And our congregation knows this. They're listening to me, so they know I'm telling the truth. Many, 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 many tens of thousands of dollars, and we invest them, literally invest every penny of that money that I'm speaking of into directly into people's lives all over the world. And I don't mean just throwing money at it, brother. We've got feet on the ground from the right. pews of our church into several nations in Africa, into the island of Vanuatu, into the nation of Peru, into the nation of of Guatemala, all over the Gulf Coast, disaster relief, hurricane relief, and all the money that comes in. Plus, we've got a school in Peru where we educate and have been for 19 years, poor children, poor families that have now, many of them led to the Lord. They've led their families to the Lord. They've been saved. They're part of churches. A lot of these kids have gotten scholarships. They've gone to college. They're changing their lives, their families. So we have done those kinds of things. We have to take a bite of the elephant a little bit at the time, whereas this church was blessed to take one great big chunk out of the elephant, and I say praise God and good on them, and that's what a church is supposed to do, what they've been doing and similar to what we've been doing. And there are many churches that do that, and they never get the press for it, of course. You mean you wouldn't spend your $46.5 million on a private jet so you don't have to deal with the demons that are on the... uh... (laughs) You know, on the on, on the airplanes that are around you, you need a a, a forty a forty a, you know a fifty yeah. million dollar jet so you can have privacy and not be affected by all the demons that are in these yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, these uh, p- public transit yeah. areas. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. No, wouldn't I wouldn't, do that. brother. The closest I've ever come. The closest I've ever come to anything like that is I flew first class twice in my 40 years of airline travel, 30 years in the ministry, and both times it was accidents. I got upgraded by the airline company because they were out of seats, and I'm a frequent flyer traveler, and so they upgraded me to first class. One of, no, three times it's happened. Two of those times I gave my seat away to elderly people or military people. The last time I couldn't because I was right up front, and I was one of the last ones on board, so I couldn't disrespect up they were shutting the door and i just had to sit down that's most time i travel uh, cabin you know just whatever it's called cattle class something like that <laughs> because, because you're right i mean it's the lord's money and i'm traveling i'm going to preach the gospel i'm not going to be jetting around in a private jet and all that you know so i i get it i, I understand what you're saying and and thank you for giving me a shot to kind of an opportunity to say all of that
didn't know. Thanks. Not only things that he didn't know, there are things he still doesn't know. Sharon has died, aged eight. Asian. We are with one of Rabbi Kaduri's disciples.